What's going on guys, Marcelo Feldman here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to EQ your bass amp. This is something that's very confusing for people. This is a question that a lot of people have. And honestly, there's not really a lot of good information about this out there. A lot of the information out there will tell you all the different characteristics that each EQ band will bring out of your sound, but that's really not the main thing you wanna look at when we're looking at where to set our EQ. It's not so much about the amp that you're using or the bass that you're using or the style of music that you're playing. Of course, those things do come into play, but the most important element is the room that you're playing in. Because when we're EQing our bass amp, what we're really doing is we're EQing to the room. The room is what's gonna dictate what kind of sound we need to get out of our amp. So in order to illustrate this, I'm gonna show you two very extreme examples of two different sounding rooms so that you can understand what I'm saying and then we'll come back and we'll take a look in detail of how we're gonna work this thing. So I'm in a bathroom right now and the bathroom is a really boomy sounding room. It's got all this reverb and echo because you have all these reflective surfaces. There's all this tile here and there's a mirror here. There's nothing really absorbing the sound. The sound is just bouncing and reflecting off of all these surfaces, creating this boomy quality to the sound with all this reverb and echo. So there's not a lot of clarity in my voice. And now I'm in a closet using the exact same camera and microphone. I'm actually just using my phone for this just to keep it simple. And as you can see, using the same thing sounds completely different just because of the room that I'm in. You don't have all that reverb and echo. There's a lot more clarity in my voice. This is a very dry sounding room because you have all these clothes absorbing the sound. And just a completely different sound using the exact same equipment. And this is actually considered like a poor man's vocal booth. Like if you're tracking vocals at home, like in a home studio in your bedroom, and you don't have a vocal booth, just throw the mic in the closet because you have all the clothes absorbing the sound. It's a very dry sounding room, so it's great for tracking vocals. So as you can see, the same equipment, the same mic can sound very different depending on the room that we're in. And this is why I can't really give you a default setting that you, or a go-to setting on an amp that's gonna sound great every time. I mean, we can start messing around with this right now in the room that I'm in right now, and we can come to the conclusion that something like, let's just set some settings here. Let's say we set it up like this, and we decided this sounds great. The bass sounds big, punchy, clear, sounds awesome. Does that mean that this is a good default go-to setting for me to use? No, because if I go into a practice room that has the acoustics of like the bathroom, this is gonna sound terrible. This is just not gonna work because it's a much more reflective room. There's a lot of reverb going on. It sounds nothing like the room that I'm in right now. And this is why you can't really tweak the stuff in your bedroom, get it to sound really good, and then you go to a gig and expect it to sound the same way. It's not going to. You're gonna to have to make adjustments. So that being said, I can't really give you default go-to settings, but I can give you pointers and tips on what to do in different rooms and different situations. So. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna start with everything flat. So in the case of this amp, it's just 12 o'clock right here. And if I move to the left, obviously I'm cutting the frequency. If I move to the right, I'm boosting the frequency. So we want it just flat to start and we're gonna to listen to it. Now, if we're in a room that's very boomy, very reflective, and we're just hearing like a lot of muddiness, there's not a lot of clarity or definition of our sound, it's just really, really boomy. What you wanna do is actually I know it may sound counterintuitive because we're bass players, but you actually want to turn down the bass, okay? And there are rooms that are very boomy, very reflective, where you may want to turn the bass down even all the way because there's already too much bass going on from the frequencies just bouncing off the walls, the wood floors, and everything. Because bass frequencies are huge, right? If you look at the waveform, they're really big waveforms and they travel long distances and they'll bounce off of everything. If you have reflective surfaces like mirrors and glass, it'll just be bouncing all over the place and that'll create a lot of bass. And on a side note actually, a lot of people, they don't like having wheels on their bass cabinets because when you have wheels, it brings it off the floor and when you take out the wheels, you have the bass cabinet touching the floor and so when you play, that sound and that waveform is gonna bounce off the floor and create even more bass and it'll shake the floor too so you'll be able to feel it. So the environment you're in, the way the sound is bouncing off of all these surfaces is gonna affect the tone and the sound that you're hearing. So 
If it's very boomy and you already have a lot of bass going on, just turn down the bass. And what we're gonna do to compensate for that is we're actually gonna look at the low mids. This is gonna be your bass in that situation. This is gonna bring out all the punch and the clarity and make it sound really good. So you turn down the bass to get that boominess out and then you boost the low mids and then you'll see that low end coming through in a much more clear way. You'll be able to hear yourself and it'll sound great. Now, if you're playing in a venue that's not like that, let's say you're playing like an outdoor venue, like you're playing in a park or even a stadium, a place where it's like open, there's no walls, there's nothing for the sound to bounce off of, that's a situation where you'll hear less bass because you don't have those bass frequencies bouncing off of anything because you're in an open area. So that's a situation where you will want to boost the bass to get some low end going on there because you don't have the assistance of all the surfaces bouncing all the sounds off. So if you don't have a lot of bass, bring that up. But if you have a lot of boominess, a lot of reflective sound and you can't hear yourself, it just sounds really muddy, bring that bass down, work with the low mids. And the treble and the high mids, the treble is really going to bring out a lot of like finger noise and a lot of like the fret noise. So if you have a lot of fret buzz going on, this will make it uh, a little worse where it will accentuate that. These are frequencies you don't have to worry about as much. Usually the problem frequency will really be that bass. That's when it sounds like muddy and not clear. The high mid and the treble, just play around with that. You know, there's really no go-to setting. There's no go-to setting for any of this stuff. But like the treble and high mid, the treble you have to be careful because if you have a really bright sounding bass and you have new strings on there. And like I said, even if you have some fret buzz going on, that's gonna really bring that out and it might sound too harsh. So usually the treble, I don't play around with much. If I do, it's because I have too bright of a sound and I'll actually bring it down to make it sound a little bit warmer. But the biggest issue that I find is really that muddiness. Um, a lot of times you'll be like in a rehearsal room or even playing like a small bar or something and you hear like there's no definition, there's no clarity, you can barely hear the vocals and what happens is that people are not working with those frequency ranges to really clear that up. I sometimes just want to like put a high pass filter on the master at like 80 hertz and just get rid of all that mud out there but what happens is like let's say the guitar player can't really hear himself because it sounds so muddy, what does he do? ranks it up, which only makes the situation worse because it, then it increases those frequencies that are creating the problem. And then the bass player can't hear himself. What does he do? Cranks it up. And again, just making the problem even worse because instead of addressing the real issue, which is those frequencies clashing with each other, you're just bringing them up and making them even louder. And then the drummer's playing harder. So now the singer can't hear himself. So the singer's gonna turn himself up. Then you start getting feedback everywhere because it's way too loud. Turning up the volume because you can't hear yourself is really a last resort. You wanna try to sound as good as you can with as low as a volume as you can, especially if you're playing in a venue that has a front of house system. You have a front of house engineer and a PA because you wanna avoid the stage volume leaking into front of house because then you're gonna interfere with the front of house guy's mix and you're not helping the room sound any better. This is one of the benefits of playing with in-ears is that you can have a pretty silent stage. It doesn't have to be very loud on stage so the stage volume doesn't really interfere with front of house. But you know, let's say the front of house guy gets a perfect mix and it sounds awesome out there and you crank your bass up too loud, the people who are near the stage they're gonna hear a very bass heavy mix because your bass amp, it's so loud that it's leaking into the front of house. And this happens with you know guitar players, with everything. So you really wanna avoid just cranking your stuff because you can't hear it. You wanna work with those frequencies and see what's clashing. You know, maybe your low end is clashing with the kick drum, so you wanna turn down that bass, you know. Maybe you're clashing with the guitar player because he has too much lows in his guitar. You really want to get that down, play more in the high frequency range so you guys aren't like clashing with each other. You're in different places. So, you know, that's how you want to take a look at bass amp is, you know, like I said, no default go-to setting. Just if it's muddy, take a look at your bass right here, work with the low mids and just understand the room that you're playing and every room is going to sound different and this is why you have sound check and you know you work with this stuff when you're doing sound check and when you're kind of like studying the room and seeing how it sounds and over time you you get to a point where you just know this stuff like you'll know like okay this room sounds like this this is exactly what i need and you won't really have to experiment you'll know just where to go 
right away. Okay, and now another thing that confuses people is the whole gain and master volume section here. So people don't know where to set the master volume and the gain. Which one do I turn up? Do I turn them both up? So here's the deal. The gain is the preamp. Okay, it's the volume that's going into the preamp and the preamp is what's coloring your sound. So if you have a really nice tube preamp, you want to get enough gain on there to where you're driving those tubes and getting the nice sound of that preamp. The master volume is just the power amp section of the bass amp. So the master volume doesn't affect your tone at all. It doesn't matter if you have the master volume way down here or way up here. It's not going to affect your tone, but the gain will. And if you want to get, if you have, like I said, a really nice tube preamp, you want to get like some drive out of those tubes, you want to get like some tube saturation, you may want to crank the gain up even more to where you're almost getting a little bit of clipping going on or add a little bit of drive, a little bit of distortion that can sound really good if you have a really good amp. Now this amp's all digital, it's a very clean sounding amp, so you can't really do that. But if you have a nice tube preamp, you can do stuff like that. So again, the gain is gonna affect your tone because that's what's driving the preamp, which is what colors your sound. So when someone says like a bass amp sounds really good, it's usually the preamp on that bass that sounds really good. And so you wanna drive it with the gain. So a good starting point for that is have your master volume all the way down, turn your gain up to 12 o'clock. Like I said, if you want a little bit of drive, you wanna really drive those tubes, get some tube saturation going, you might wanna go a little bit more. And then you start turning up your master volume to where you get the volume that you want or to where you get it as loud as you want because this it doesn't matter where this ends up it's not going to affect your sound like i said the gain will so i hope that's helpful i hope that answers some questions as far as eqing your bass amp like i said no default setting no go-to setting whoever says that to you has no idea what they're talking about because like i said in the room i'm in right now i can have an awesome setting i go to a really reflective room that sounds like a bathroom and it's going to sound horrendous so play around with that play around with the frequencies and if you can't hear yourself it sounds really muddy not clear don't go to the volume don't just start cranking up the volume because you're only making the situation worse go to your EQ section that's what it's there for play around with that find the frequencies that work cut out the frequencies that don't and make sure you know if the other stuff stuff sounds muddy tell your guitar player too like hey you know i think you you got to cut out some of the low end on your guitar it's kind of clashing with everything and it's making everything sound muddy you know you really want to craft the eq because i see this over and over again there's no one really controlling this stuff when bands are playing like at venues they're just kind of there's no mix they're just kind of doing their own thing the guitar player just turns up really loud to where he can hear himself bass player just cranks it up and then all you have is just like mud, you know, because no one's really EQing their stuff. No one's working on the balance between the instruments. And then you can't hear the vocals at all. I'm sure you guys have heard that, like really muddy sounding rooms with no clarity, no vocals coming out of the mix. And it's because people are not paying attention to this stuff. So make sure that you do from now on because now you know about this. And I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comment down below. And hopefully I can get to them and answer them and help you guys out. So like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.